Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we are going to show you how to use uh, Power Pivot in Excel. So, what's Power Pivot? So, Power Pivot allows you to connect several files. Okay, so let's say these are the files. So, I have my file 1, okay, file 2, or table 2, file 3, and connect them to one another in order for them to become one data model. So we call this uh, structure the data model. Okay, and from here, we can create a pivot table in Excel. Okay, an Excel uh, pivot table. Okay, using that uh, data model. Okay, so the part here that allowed us to connect the files is okay, Power Pivot. Alright, so as you could see, you can actually create a pivot table, one pivot table out of three files. You just have to connect them okay, using Power Pivot. So let's start. For you to do that, first, you need to open your Excel file, of course, a blank Excel worksheet. And then you have to make sure that you have files ready to connect. So here I have four CSV files that I am going to connect. I have my list of customers, I have my list of products, I have my sales data, I have my territory codes. And let's examine how the file should look like whenever you're planning to make a power pivot. So let's start with the sales data. So if I'm going to have the data that I'm going to plot in my pivot, in my power pivot, you will notice that I have your very simple, okay, but very uniform, consistent kind of data. So I have the order dates here, and they're all written in the same way, same format, same with the stock date, order number, product key, customer key, no errors, okay? One thing you would notice is that it doesn't have a lot of information on it. It doesn't have any customer name. It doesn't have any product name. It doesn't mention what territory that is. Okay, but I have here the quantity and the line item, for example. So where are the information? Well, the information will be derived from the other files. So the idea is that you're going to make a sort of like a relational database wherein each files or each file should connect to one another. So I have here another file, and this file contains the names of the customers, the birth date, etc. So I have here the customer key, and that customer key can be used to connect to the customer key of my sales data. So one thing about Power Pivot is that your tables should be able to have a connection okay, between them. There has to be a way that we can draw a line later on okay, so that these files can connect. Okay, so if for example I have four files, it doesn't, uh, it's, it doesn't mean that each file should be connected with one another. What should happen is that all these four files should be in a way connected to one another all right. So in my case here, the sales data is going to be the one connecting the product key, the customer names, etc. So here I open the product master list, which contains the product key and the names and descriptions of the product, which can be connected to my product key in the sales data. But my customer key and my, so my customer list and my product list doesn't have any connection between them, but that's fine because the sales data is there to connect them. So that's the rule, okay? So there has to be a way to connect. No I, no uh, worksheet will be an island wherein it doesn't connect to any of the files. So eventually we will create a web of files. So now that we're ready, we know that each of the files has a way to connect to one another, we need to start with a blank Excel workbook. And then in this blank Excel workbook, we need to go to the Power Pivot tab. And just in case you do not have the Power Pivot tab, you have to go to File, 
And then under File, you go to Options. Under File Options, you go to Add-ins. And you have to look for the Power Pivot option here in this uh, list of all, all your add-ins. If you do not have the add-in available, it means that you may need to install it. You may download it from the Microsoft uh, website. However, take note that not all versions of Excel is currently supported by Power Pivot. So just double check what uh, Excel version you have and if that version is supported by Power Pivot. So here I have Power Pivot and from here you need to see that it belongs to the COM add-ins group. So I have to go down here under manage and go to COM add-ins and then click go. From here you will see a list of all add-ins available for you. And if you have Power Pivot, you should be able to see it here and check it if you don't have it checked. And then click OK. That should produce the Power Pivot uh, tab in your Excel. So now we're ready to connect the files. So I'm just going to make sure that all the files are closed. Okay, I'm going to close this one. And by the way, take note that the files that I have are CSV files. So it actually has an effect on what you will choose later on. So I'll show that to you later. So all the files are CSV here. So I have to go to Power Pivot to start and then go to Manage. And then once you click Manage, it will open the Power Pivot uh, window. So Power Pivot is technically a, 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 it's a program within Excel. And now you have this smaller window okay and from here from home you can connect to different files that it's capable to connect to so you have here from database like sql or access or you have other services but in our case since we are going to connect to files you need to go to from other sources and we will see all other options available for us to connect to but in our case, we need to scroll all the way down because that is where text file is found. So in Power Pivot, CSV files or comma separated value files are treated as text files. If you are going to connect to Excel files, then you need to select the other one. So regardless, the procedure is the same. So you select the file type, then you click next. And the next step is for us to browse our computer in order to find the first file that we're going to connect to Power Pivot. So I'm going to click Browse and you have to navigate the Explorer. Okay, so I have prepared my files here. So the first file that I'm going to connect to is the customer list file. Click Open. Now, one thing is that if your table in Excel or in your CSV is just regular range of cells, your Power Pivot will treat all the cells as part of the data. That is quite crucial because the first row should be the title. So you should see here that Power Pivot read the first rows as part of the data, and that should not be the case. The first row should be the title or the column header of my report. So what I need to do is to promote row one as the title, and that's done by checking this box over here. So that would convert the first row as the column headers, all right? So I'm going to check that, and as you could see now, the column header is promoted, okay? I will now click Finish, and then you have to wait for the success message to show up before you close. So that is how you connect your files to Power Pivot. So Power Pivot will technically get copies of the data, and that is why Power Pivot files are usually heavier because the file is uh, a combination of different files. So you should see that I have the file here. 
And you should be able to see as well that I have a tab here that says customer list. You may want to check this out later because once you connect all the files, you will get more tabs okay, showing up here. So we'll have to do that to the other files as well. So I click from other sources, scroll all the way down, text file, click next, and then browse again. So I'm going to connect to my product master list. Do not forget to promote the first row as column headers and then click finish. Wait for the success and then close. So I'm going to do this a little faster now since we've already discussed how to do it. And by the way, your power pivot may uh, be slow if it's the first time that it's going to do things. So it's, it's sort of like it has that... Uh, sluggishness when you're going to do it for the first time but after the first time it should be should be running faster so finish so I'm on my way to the last file right so one last file to go and by the way, you can connect different combination of files. So it's possible that your first file is a CSV file, your second file is an Excel file, the other one is in MS Access. That's okay. Just have to put them all in Power Pivot. So now I just finished loading all the files that I want to connect okay, to my Power Pivot. And like what I mentioned, you should notice that I have here now different tabs as if it's in Excel, okay, but each tab here technically represents one file. But take note that that procedure only loaded the files into Power Pivot. They're not yet connected to one another. So the next step is for us to connect all these four files to create that web. So we have to go to Home and then under Home, all the way to the right, you should see their diagram view. So it's over here because right now we're in data view, where you see the data of the worksheets. So we go to diagram view and that would transform your view into something like this. So each file is now represented as a box. And each box displays the different headers of our report. So you can actually drag them around so that you create sort of like a map or a layout. Uh, personally, I'm fond of putting the data below the master lists. Okay. So that I know which files should act as the master lists or the parent files. They are the source of data. And which one is the child data? Okay, this is the data and the parent files are sort of like the master lists. Okay, so now we're going to connect them. It's actually quite easy. You should have identified what headers should connect from the parent to the child. So you start from the parent side and then drag to the child side. And you will notice that there's a line that shows you that they are going to be connected. Make sure that you're not mis going to commit the mistake of connecting the different headers. So here, customer key to customer key, let it go and let Power Pivot connect the two files. So now they are connected as easy as that. You should see that there's one on the master list side and many on the child side because what we just created is called a one-to-many cardinality or one-to-many relationship wherein there is only one instance of the customer key in the master list but many instance in the sales data. And that makes sense because one customer can have different purchases in my sales data. So one-to-many is the ideal relationship that you should see in 
your relational database in your Power Pivot. And another thing that you need to take note is that the flow, the data flow, should be from the parent to child. You should see that it is signified by the arrow over here. So the next one is I'm going to connect the product key to the product key here. And just in case you made the mistake of connecting, you can double click the line and you can sort of like correct okay, the relationship. But take note that if you connected incorrectly, you will get a warning here. Okay, that we are creating a many-to-many -many relationship. And as you could see, it's currently not supported. So it's one-to-many that you should be creating. So click OK. And now the territory code, I will connect to the territory key of my sales data. I hope here in this third example, you will notice that the headers doesn't have to match when it comes to the name. So in the master list, it is named sales territory key, while in the child data, it says territory key. And that's fine. As long as the contents of those columns are the same, can be matched, then Power Pivot should be able to still build the relationship out of that. So the header names technically do not matter in Power Pivot. And now we have completed the diagram or the data model Okay, or some people call it the data schema of our pivot table. And like what I mentioned, it's not necessary that all of the files has a way to connect to one another. As you can see, the master lists are not connected to one another, but they are all connected to the child. So in essence, you build this web of files. Okay, and now this is the job of Power Pivot. We're now ready to go back to Excel and build our Power Pivot or our Pivot table, I mean. So in Power Pivot under Home, you should be able to see there somewhere in the middle, Pivot Table. So I will click the Pivot Table button. That will send me back to Excel because Pivot Table is within the jurisdiction of Excel. Power Pivot's jurisdiction is more on the connecting to those uh, files and linking them together. Pivot table is still within Excel. So I only have one question remaining. Is it going to be a new worksheet or an existing worksheet? So for this, I'm going to create a new worksheet, then click OK. And now I'm back to the regular Pivot table uh, screen. But you will notice that on the right side, I have all the four files okay, available in my pivot table. So to create, it's just like the way you do pivot tables naturally. So let's say that I want to get the data, the product uh, names from my product master list and drag it to the rows. And I want to find out how many items I have sold okay, for each of the products. And that information can be found in the sales data. So I'm going to drop down the other files, works, um, field names, and look for order quantity. So I'm now dragging order quantity to values. And there it is. It now managed to connect okay, the two files that I have in my uh, model. So the rows are from the product master list, the quantities are from the sales data. All right, so everything you know about pivot table applies in the Power Pivot, except for calculated fields. You cannot create calculated fields in, uh, in a pivot table that is made using a Power Pivot data model because Power Pivot uses uh, DAX formulas, which maybe I will uh, show in a different video. But for now, I want to show you that even, for example, the slicer. I'll go to Analyze, Insert Slicer. And even in the slicer pop-up, you have different files to choose from. 
So take note, many people actually don't see this. There's an All tab here that will show you all the files because the active one shows only the current files that are in use. So I'm going to go to All. And let's say that under the Territory Codes file, I'm going to check the country and then click OK. So I now have a slicer. And the slicer is technically from another file, right? So from here, I could click on the country available and my pivot table is doing fine. All right. So there you have it. There's our power pivot. I hope you learn something and I hope you see how powerful this becomes. Oh, by the way, before I forget, one common question is that will your file, will your power pivot update if the files change? Okay, in the folder, let's say I made some modifications here. Well, all you have to do in Power Pivot, in Pivot Table, is right click refresh. It's really just like how you do it in Excel regular pivot tables. You have to refresh. And when you refresh, it will reconnect to the files, checking if there are any changes and if there are any additional rows or additional columns in your uh, data. That's how good it is. Imagine you can have different files being worked on by different people, customer list being worked on by the, the team A, and you have the sales data being worked on by the sales team, and the product list being worked on by the products team. And you being the reporter, the analyst, all you have to do is right click refresh and it, it will pick up all the data from all these files that we use to connect okay and there you have it i hope you learned something new if you have any questions feel free to use the comment section i'll try my best to answer you as soon as i can but for now i hope you hit the like and subscribe button if you did learn something and i will see you in the next video